This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We've got a fun weekend in sports coming up, not just conference tournaments and men's college basketball, which we discussed on Wednesday, not just UFC, which we talked through with Austin Swain yesterday, but also we've got EPL, we've got NASCAR in Phoenix. It is going to be a fun weekend. We're going to get you set for that weekend by talking to Austin Cass for today. We'll get his read on the EPL slate, also talk some futures, and then I'll go through what my numbers are saying about the NASCAR Cup Series and Xfinity Series in Phoenix over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here, as mentioned, by Austin Cass. Check him out on Twitter, at Austin Cass. He is a writer for us over at NumberFire.com. Austin, it is almost the weekend, almost a fun slate in the EPL. How are you doing today? Uh, doing really well. Yeah, uh, it just feels like a really fun time of the year with all the sports that are going on. So. And it is fun. And you also do college basketball stuff for us at Number Fire. And we're going to have you on next Wednesday and break down the Thursday games in the NCAA tournament. That's it's a really fun time of year. Um, I think that honestly, having all this to watch is is nice for me as someone who has a lot of downtime between football and baseball start. It's nice to have fun events like this to kind of keep the juices flowing uh, throughout March. Yeah, I feel the exact same. And it's a tough balance of trying to get work done and watching yeah. college basketball at the same time. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm basically off next Thursday. I think you're off uh, the, some sometimes next week too. So uh, it's it's nice to have, you know, sneak out a little bit uh, yeah. and watch some sports when we can. For sure. We're going to break down the EPL slate for today and get Austin thoughts on that. Then we'll circle back later on and talk about some NASCAR. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. We have our USC preview with Austin Swaim up. There is a timestamp for that in the episode description from yesterday's show. If you want to check out some UFC thoughts for tomorrow as well. Then coming up on Monday, we have our live stream of the NCAA tournament bracket breakdown. We'll have Dr. Ed Feng and Bennett Corcoran here to break down their thoughts in the bracket. They'll talk strategy for tournaments uh, for the bracket and get you ready to win your pools as well. That'll be live on the FanDuel YouTube page, 6 p.m. Eastern, and then also up on the Covering the Spread podcast feed after that. So go search for that wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. Now, Austin, when we've had you on before, we talked a lot about the top of the table. We talked about uh, Arsenal. We talked about Man City. But over at FanDuel Sportsbook, you can also bet on which teams will finish inside the top four for this year right now manchester united is down at uh, minus 950 so pretty locked in there liverpool minus 135 tottenham is plus 230 newcastle is plus 270 when you look at this market austin any value stand out for you to finish top four as of right now yeah i really like liverpool um as you just laid out this is Price is pretty much a three-team race between Liverpool, Tottenham, and Newcastle for the fourth and final Champions League spot. Um, I think Liverpool should probably be a slightly bigger favorite than what they are at this minus 135 price. As we talked about last week, Liverpool have been getting healthier, and going by expected goals, they've been playing much better lately, particularly in attack, scoring at least 1.8 expected goals in five of their last six matches. And that all came to fruition as they beat uh, United 7-0 last weekend. So heading into this weekend, Liverpool are fifth in the table, just three points behind Tottenham with a game in hand. And Newcastle are one point behind Liverpool with a game in hand on Liverpool. So there's a lot of moving parts here. But despite everything that's gone wrong for Liverpool this season and how poor they've looked, especially in defense at times and how many injuries they've had, they're still in a pretty nice spot to get into the top four. And just based on talent, they're the most talented team of those, the three teams battling for this fourth spot. And I really like that they're already out of the FA Cup, and they're probably going to be out of the Champions League this time next week. So getting into the top four is going to be their sole focus the rest of the way. So I like them at this minus 135 price. Yeah, you'd mentioned them last week, their money line, and I was out at brunch, and the game was on, uh, the match is on TV in the place where we have for brunch, and I saw it was 3-0, and I was like, okay, cool, I don't have to worry about that, I can just like let that coast, 
Uh, I didn't realize until after I got home, it was seven nil by the end. So a stomping there. What do the expected goals look like when you defeat a team seven? I'm assuming it's obviously not quite that optimistic, but like that had to be just a slaughtering in terms of even the advanced metrics there. Yeah. You know, soccer is a crazy sport. Um, it, it wasn't as bad as you would think. Yeah. Uh, it was definitely lopsided toward Liverpool. I, th- I want to say it was like basically two or three to like under one. Yeah. But that's kind of happened sometimes. And then, you know, Liverpool had it happen the other way to them. They lost 5 2 to Real Madrid in a game they won expected goals on. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just weird things can happen. A goalie mistake or a guy scores a great goal from, you know, distance that can really throw off things. Yeah. So Liverpool feeling themselves right now, uh, getting both the advanced metrics and the results in their favor. So minus 135 to finish top four. Austin is seeing value in that right now. Let's talk now about the Saturday slate. It is a six game slate in the EPL for this week. Austin, looking there, anything stand out to you in the more traditional markets? Yeah, I'm looking at the Brentford Everton matchup, uh, specifically the Ty No Bet market. And I'm really into Brentford at their minus 110 price. Uh, the game's basically priced as like a pretty even matchup, which is a head scratcher for me. Um, I always get a little bit nervous when I think that the lines are off because I, I don't know as much as they do. Right. But all signs are pointing to Brentford for me and this mark, the line is moving toward Brentford, which makes me feel a lot better. Um, Everton have been better since hiring, uh, Sean Dyche, but they still bring pretty bad. They've won only once since their big upset over Arsenal and Dice's first game. And then that five-match run, they've played three sides that are in the top 11, and uh, Brentford are in ninth. And in those three matches, they've conceded 2.7, 2.2, and 1.9 XG uh, per FB ref's expected goals model. The 1.9 came in a home match against Aston Villa, which is a side that's pretty comparable to Brentford, but Brentford's actually a little bit better. Um so even though this match is at Everton and Everton have a ton to play for with their spot in the table and how they're fighting for their lives, um, I think Brentford are going to be able to create a lot of chances. And Brentford have not lost a Premier League match since October 23rd. That's a run of 12 fixtures. And they haven't lost to a team in the bottom half of the table um, all season long. So everything's pointing to Brentford at that minus 110 time bet price for me. And I, I don't even mind them at the 160 or I guess plus 170 money line price either. Yeah, 170 is the money line if you include a tie. It's minus 110 if you make the tie no bet, which is what Austin is recommending here. Why do you think the market is skeptical of them, given the stuff you laid out? Because I was when I when I have a spot where I am off from the market. I try to reverse engineer, okay, why am I off? Or why is the market different from where I'm at? So when you try to concoct the reasoning for this, what reasoning comes to your mind? So I do the same thing. And I, yeah, I, it's really fun process to try to figure it out, I think. And I would say for, for me, the motivation that Everton has mm. uh, being in 18th really in a dangerous spot where they are going to find themselves fighting to stay in the Premier League. The match is at home. Everton was in a similar position last year and uh, really ended up leaning heavily on their home field advantage to get out of it. So I think that's probably sure. why the market is where it is. But the Aston Villa match earlier that I mentioned where Aston Villa had 1.9 XG and um, that game was actually at Everton as well. So the home field advantage hasn't paid uh, off that well so far for Everton. And yeah, like I said, just everything is coming up Brentford for me when I look at this game. Okay. So even if we know why the market may be there, we can still disagree with that reasoning and, and think that, uh, that, you know, sometimes the market can just be off. Uh, so minus 110 for Brentford against Everton in the tie, no bet market. And Austin said he, a bit of interest in the, uh, the money line at plus 170 if you include the tie as well. What about player props across Saturday, Austin? Anything stand out to you there? Well, the the player prop I really like for this weekend is actually a Sunday game. It's okay. uh, Wolves and Newcastle. Okay. At St. James Park. Um, I want to bet on Newcastle's starting striker, which is probably going to be either Alexander Isak or Callum Wilson to score or assist. Both guys are priced at minus 110. And... Uh, 
I'm gonna have I'm gonna wait till 11:30 Eastern time on Sunday morning to make this bet once I see the starting lineup because it's likely only one of those two starts. But uh, Newcastle got off to an amazing start this year. At one point, it looked like they were almost locks to finish in the top four, but they've really slowed um, in league play. But there's there's a lot of bad luck at play here over their last eight. Premier League matches, they've scored only three goals despite amassing 11.3 expected goals. So in short, their Newcastle are due and Wolves are beatable. Wolves have given up the seventh most expected goals this season and have allowed at least one goal in 10 consecutive away matches. Newcastle are going to be able to create some chances and either Isaac or Wilson, whichever one of them starts, is going to be a focal point and have a really good chance to be involved with either a goal or an assist. So both those, again, as you mentioned, minus 110. The two guys you outlined, Callum Wilson, Alexander Izak, uh, they're both minus 110 right now. That's for the Newcastle versus the Wolves matchup. That is on Sunday. Uh, so Austin liking both those there, depending on who starts. Um, for people who may not know, a.k.a. me, when do lineups get announced? Is it 60 minutes before uh, before the match begins? Yep, it's 60 okay. minutes before. And this, this match is at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday. So at 11.30, they'll be out. Okay. And do markets shift a lot based on starters or cause this one, you know, it's again, it's minus one ten for both these guys. Seems like that's probably set in stone effectively and it won't shift a ton right yep. when the lineups are announced. You're right. Yep. They usually bake in okay. the the probability of maybe somebody starting at striker, which is okay. typically the position that scores the most goals. If something odd happened and neither Wilson nor Isaac started and say Anthony Gordon started at striker his number might drop just a little bit, but yeah, they normally account for that and just play it safe on their end. Okay. Well, hopefully that's a, a fun primer for the EPL Saturday slate. That is Austin Cass again. Find his EPL work over at numberfire.com next week. You'll find him here on the show on Wednesday talking about some NCAA tournament men's basketball games. Austin, have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy the EPL. Enjoy the conference championship games. And we'll talk to you once again next week for, a again, another fun episode. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Check out Austin on Twitter at Austin Cass. And again, find his work over at numberfire.com. We're going to talk some NASCAR at Phoenix, both the Cup Series and the Xfinity Series in just one second. But first, the NBA season is hurtling towards the playoffs. And now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It is safe, secure, and super easy to use then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained plus FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay so don't miss a chance to get your no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars in bonus bets make every moment more with FanDuel an official sports betting partner of the NBA must be 21 plus and present in select states First online, a real money wager only, $10 deposit required. Refund issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming, Kansas, 1-800-522-4700, or in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. In New York, 1-877-A-HOPE-NY or text hope -Y. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.NET. Let's talk some NASCAR now. We got the Cup Series and the Xfinity Series out in Phoenix for this weekend. And it's a very new setup for the Cup Series for this week because they are changing up their entire short track and road course package to try to make the racing better than it was on those tracks last year. And that does apply to Phoenix as well. The expected change here is about a 30% reduction in downforce. And that's a big change. And it means that last year's data is tainted from what we saw there. So I still have a model for this race because I do think that um, we can account for these changes, increase projected incident rates, increase the variance as well. But 
I'm not going to not build a model. So proceed with some caution, but I do think they we can still find some good bets here. And there are three top 10 bets I like prior to practice, which is scheduled for tonight at 6.35 p.m. Eastern. Those ones are Eric Almarola, Brad Keselowski, and Austin Sindrick. Almarola, the big one for me, he's down to plus 250 to finish inside the top 10. That is a pretty significant move from where he opened. Uh, he was plus 340, I believe, at open. He's down to plus 250. So we missed out a lot here in terms of getting the best number, but I still think there's value here. Uh, the implied market plus 250 is 28.6%. I have Almarola at 43.6%, so still about 15 percentage points of value there. That's a pretty big gap, which, as discussed with Austin, does make you a bit nervous, but I think it's for a good reason. Almarola is uh, 10 races in Phoenix with Stuart Haas racing. Uh, it spans four different rules packages or cars. And in those 10 races, he's finished top five and a half. Uh, so 50% top 10 rate with this team at this track. If you expand that sample and look at all short flat tracks from 2020 on. So ever since they shifted to that lower downforce package in 2020, 20 race sample. In that time, Almarola has a top 10 in 10 out of 20 races. So again, 50% there as well. Now, in that sample specifically, just one of those top 10s came in Phoenix, but he also had finishes of 11th, 12th, and 13th in those races. So it's not like he was bad at Phoenix specifically. He just wasn't as good as he was at New Hampshire, Richmond, and Martinsville. For Almarola... Again, the implied marks here, 28.6%. He has shortened a lot, so the value is not as plumb as it was before, but I do still think it is too low in Almarola. Again, I've got him at 43.6%, uh, so pretty well above market, plus 250, not the best number you could have gotten, but still a value for me. He is the primary guy I'm focusing on for this week in the NASCAR Cup Series. Other two, as mentioned, are Brad Keselowski and Austin Sendrick. Keselowski, 3-1. to one. Sendrick, plus 340. I have Kez at 29% to finish top 10. Sendrick, 28.5%. Uh, implied for Keselowski is um, is uh, 25%. And Sendrick is 22.7%. Keselowski, if you look back to last year, seven races on short flat tracks. And he crossed the finish line inside the top 10 in two of those seven races. So 28.5% rate. He did get disqualified once, so it didn't count, but he had the speed. And I think that what was especially encouraging for me was that the speed in RFK racing for Keselowski and Chris Buescher got better as the year went along. Uh, Keselowski and Buescher in the first Richmond race ran pretty well. Second Richmond race, Buescher almost won it. Keselowski finished top 10 in Phoenix or in New Hampshire. He also did finish really well in Martinsville, but again, was disqualified there. Phoenix historically not like the best track for Keselowski relative to equipment. So this one's more so about the gains that RFK Racing made uh, by the Keselowski as a driver. I think that three to one, a good number for him. Sindrick, no top 10 finishes last year on this track type, but he finished between 11th and 13th, four separate times in seven races. So he was right there knocking on the doorstep. Just couldn't quite cross that threshold. He also, Cindric won twice at Phoenix in the Xfinity Series. He was a runner-up in another, got passed by Daniel Hemrick on the last lap there. So this should be a good bounce-back spot for Ford, um, with Arrow mattering less than it did at the other tracks. So I'm fine buying into all these guys. The, the best one for me right now, again, is Almarola, even down to plus 250. I like Keselowski 3-1, to one, Cindric at plus 340 to finish inside the top 10. I think all those pretty good values for me. The one guy I'd watch in in practice on uh, Friday night is Ryan Blaney. He's 8-1 to one to win right now. I do show value there based on my current model, but again, not really sure the accuracy of it given the changes. So holding off there, and I'm okay waiting until practice. If Blaney comes out and is fast in practice on Friday, even if he reopens at like Honestly, seven to one, I'm probably still going to be showing value uh, based on where I'm at right now. So I'm okay slow playing this, taking a wait and see approach and seeing how Blaney runs in practice on Friday night. If he does what he did last year at Phoenix, where he had, I think, the best car in the first race, he had the best car in the second race too, but kind of gave his teammate Joey Logano uh, some slack cut him some slack, let Logano win on uh, the championship race. Logano won the championship. Blaney 
he's due for a win here, given how well he's run. So Blaine to me is the main guy I'm focusing on practice. Uh, uh, Martin Truex Jr., the other guy who I show a decent amount of value on to win right now. But I do want to see practice for the win bets. For top 10s, I don't care as much. But uh, for the win bets, I'll hold off. So Blaney and Truex are the main guys I'm focusing on there. But for the top 10 bets, I like Almirola plus 250, Keselowski 300, and Cindric plus 340, each to finish inside the top 10. On the Xfinity Series side, we are once again dealing with Kyle Busch. Uh, Busch running the Xfinity Series. He has been dominant there in the past and was very fast last weekend in Vegas, but didn't win. Uh, we got the Austin Hill winner here on the show, 20 to 1 in that one last week. So I do still think we can bet against Kyle Bush and feel pretty good about it. The problem is the guy I was going to bet on was Brandon Jones. And as I look at the Xfinity Series odds right now, he is short to plus 950. He was uh, 15 to 1. As of this morning, so a pretty big move on Brandon Jones there. So the value on Jones that we had seen previously is now gone. I will say, though, you can likely still get Brandon Jones at uh, 15 to 1 elsewhere. I'm going to check uh, one of the book here quickly to see where Jones is at there, because if you can still get 15 to 1 on Jones, I think that is a very good number. Uh, he's 12 to 1 elsewhere. You know, that's not bad. The reason I'm on Jones is because he's been pretty good on this track type. Um, he uh, is a 10% to win for me. And when he was with Joe Gibbs Racing, he was pretty good on this track type. He won Martinsville the first race last year, finished runner-up in Phoenix. The first race could have won the second Martinsville race, but got wrecked by his teammate, Ty Gibbs. Now, Jones is with Junior Motorsports. So, different team, but still a top flight team. Um, I think that Junior Motorsports and Gibbs, the top two teams in the Xfinity Series. Jones, again, really good on this track type. He has shortened from 15 to 1. I would shop around. If you can still find 15 to 1 to win for, for Brandon Jones, I would take that uh, because I think there's good value there. If you can only get 12 to 1, that's fine. Not as good, obviously. It is a pretty significant move. Uh, I can see Jones to podium at 4 to 1 elsewhere, and then Jones plus 170 to finish inside the top five. So the implied odds of plus 170 are 37%. I've got Jones at 42.8% to finish top five, so a bit above that. So if you want to avoid Kyle Busch, I don't mind taking Jones uh, uh, plus 170 to finish inside the top five. I think that's a, a good value based on what he did, based on his team, et cetera, et cetera. So shop around. Um, Brandon Jones, the primary guy who I think could be a good bet for this week. So shop around on Jones, see what you can find there. Based on the current odds at FanDuel, I think the one guy I could have interested in is Sammy Smith. He's 17 to 1 to win right now. I think that's a very enticing number smith is driving for joe gibbs racing so uh the team that jones was at last year teammate of joe uh, john hunter nemechek nemechek right now is five to one ryan shrex and gibbs as well he's 15 to one i'm not sure why shrex is shorter than sammy smith uh i actually do have i guess um shrex a bit above smith myself as well but i've got smith at 5.8 percent to win so Decently optimistic there. There was some value in his top five market uh, previously. The implied odds at 17 to 1 for Smith are 5.6%. So just a bit below where I have him, but um, I still think that's an okay value. So if you can't find Brandon Jones, 15 to 1, maybe as short as 12 to 1, kind of a maybe there. I would check out Sammy Smith, but um, I do think that. The Smith top five market, the Jones top five market, both those enticing again, Jones plus 170, if you can get him there to, to finish top five would be a value for me. So hopefully you can still find some good numbers out there. Annoying when things shorten as you're recording uh, mid recording, but um, I do still think that the Jones top five number at plus 170 is a good bet if you can find it. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Want to give a big thank you once again to Austin Cass for swinging by and talking about his thoughts on the EPL slate and breaking that down. Again, a reminder, coming up on Monday, our show for the day will be up late because we're going to do that live stream 6 p.m. Eastern on the FanDuel YouTube page. We'll put that up here on the Covering the Spread podcast feed after that as well. So if you want to watch live, check out the FanDuel YouTube page. Swing by there, 6 p.m. Eastern, myself, not giving advice, uh, just asking questions with Dr. Ed Fang, Bennett Corcoran of Shot Quality. 
They'll give their insights and their thoughts on the tourney to help you win your bracket and more NCAA tournament podcasts coming up throughout the week as well. So subscribe to Covering the Spread or check out the FanDuel YouTube page to get all those as they go live. If you have any questions, whether it be scheduling or something else, uh, uh, for me on Twitter, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across this very fun sports weekend. We'll talk to you once again Monday to break down the NCAA Men's Tournament. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs> <laughs>